Dylan? Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you about your wide receivers. I mean, just us looking out there, it looks like maybe as talented a group as you guys have had. What are your thoughts on those guys, and, and how do you how do you decide where you, you draw the line on, on who plays and who doesn't? Yeah, we feel feel really good. Coach Guyton's done a tremendous job with that whole group, um, you know, from a recruiting standpoint and a development standpoint. Um, uh, those guys are, are bought in. They're doing everything from a blocking standpoint, perimeter standpoint, knowledge standpoint, catching the football. And then we got some guys that can separate and, and get down the field and make plays. So, um, you know, coming in, that was really a weakness that we felt like, you know, it was unproven. And um, we've had a lot of guys step up, guys that have been here as well. Some of the some of the young guys have gotten better on campus. Um, and that's with, you know, Coach Walker and our shrink program and what they've done all summer. So we feel like that's a strong group now, which going into the spring and, and fall camp, we didn't feel that way. Um, so we're really excited about the group. How has KJ progressed and what's been the challenge for him coming back as a starter and, um, you know, I guess leading this team this year? Well, you hit it right there. It's just leading. That's that's been it's been so great to have a guy that's done it because um, when when he talks, they listen. Um, and that wasn't the case this time a year ago. I mean, this time a year ago, you know, we really had no idea what what he could do on the field um, before you get in a game with live bullets. Then, you know, you just really don't know. And so now we know what we have from a competitor standpoint, from a player, um, his development as a as a pure quarterback, throwing the football, seeing reads. Um, his leadership skills um, in the locker room, you know, during summer workouts, everything that he's done, he's put in himself in a position to have a great year. So um, incredibly pleased with his work ethic and uh, the way that he's he's mentored some of the younger guys, you know, just trying to get them, uh, I don't want to say play on his level, but, you know, he's playing at a pretty high level and, you know, in practice right now. And to get those guys on the same page has, has been impressive to watch. So I'm really, I'm really pleased with him. I'll ask you Nate's question first. He wanted me to ask you what, how much influence did Felipe Franks have on KJ's becoming the leader and stuff? Yeah, um, you know, Felipe did a tremendous job. And KJ, um, you know, we played him a little bit. He started the Missouri game. But, you know, seeing the way that – how important it was, you know, um, because for Felipe, he had basically – you know, at that point, he had five months to go and prove what he could go do to, to live out his childhood dream. And um, KJ was was right there and there was a competition there for a while. And uh, Felipe, being being an older guy, he, he ended up winning that in general. But uh, KJ never faltered. He was always prepared. I, I, you know, everything you do, you're, you're judging everything that they're doing. And so in meetings and workouts, you're, you always got a pretty good idea of what their mental state is. And KJ never faltered. He always stayed. Um, you know, in, in the now and was always treating it like he's one play away from playing. And so I was, I was impressed with that, but yeah, Felipe did a great job with him. Of course, KJ, he just stepped up, you know, and I read a story last night, they were kind of another school where they were being critical of his passing in the bowl game, but you know, he's got receivers now that he didn't have in the bowl game. Plus he's had a lot longer to work with. Just talk about how you feel like he's, what kind of season can he have, you know, just before he's in the passing game with those new receivers and stuff. Tom will tell, you know, Tom will tell. We feel good about, um, you know, it It all matters with the passing game, you know, how we're running the football, you know, how we're protecting. There's so many variables, um, how they're playing us. If they're, if they're playing us off, we're going to run the football. I mean, so there's just so many variables that, you know, you can look at it and say, well, heck, he only threw for 150 yards. Bottom line is he is a winner. We know he's a winner. And when you're a quarterback, to be a great quarterback, you have to win football games. Um, and I believe in him. I wouldn't trade him for anybody in America when it comes to winning football games. And however we got to do it, we got to do it. Hey, Kendall, this being roughly halfway before the season starts in camp, how are you in terms of your pace of install, you know, where you feel like you're, you're progressing, you know, just overall take on where you are right now? Oh, we've got, we've got so much stuff in. It's impressive that these guys can remember what we're doing. I mean, we just – We've we've had, you know, you go in the spring and then in the summer, you know, they have play around practices, so they never really get off of football. You know, it's just year round. It's not like it used to be where they they leave for the summer and you got to come back and really install again. You know, we started fall camp. We got. Almost 90 percent of the entire offense in because they don't ever leave and, and they're they're always, you know, having player led workouts and they're able to to stay with that knowledge. So we got a lot of stuff in and, um, you know, different formations, different personnel. Oh, and then um, 
I know you guys track everything. So to the extent you can tell us what's, what's the efficiency completion percentage and for the quarterbacks, all three. Um, you know, right now, KJ's leading that group. Cade Fortin is right behind him and Malik Hornsby is behind him. Um, obviously KJ's, you know, working with a little bit high, higher caliber player and O-line. Um, and, but he's also playing against it too. So there's, there's DBs and guys that are making plays. So, um, I'm pleased with where they're at. You know, we've we've been practicing against this defense. I was talking to Kyle on the way over here. We've been practicing against these guys for a long time. It seems like so. Um, we're ready to get on and and start getting ready for Cincinnati. You said in spring that you wanted KJ's accuracy to improve, and obviously you just said he's leading the group. But just how has he kind of grown in that area, just specifically? Um, I think his footwork. His footwork has been key for for all of that. You know, there were times last year. I'm sure that. You know, everybody sees it. Um, there's times that he was stagnant in the pocket, standing straight up, and his footwork has been really, really good. That's been a point of emphasis for us. And um, he's done a tremendous job with that. So we're very, very pleased with that, and it's helping his accuracy. A lot of guys have told us that Matt Landers is super fast um, and just has been really impressive in that regard. Just what have you seen from him, and what is he bringing to this offense? Yeah, I tried to catch him the other day. It didn't work. Um, he can run, and he's uh, he's kind of a guy that scoots. So there, there's guys that are really pretty runners where they get their knees high and run like a track player and he a track athlete. He's really not that. Um, very deceptive speed. We've underthrown him quite a bit just because of um, you don't think that he's moving as fast as he is. Um, he had a drop today, but he's had really strong hands um, and his work ethic and really his mental state I've been incredibly impressed with. Um, the fact that he's come in here, um, you know, as a summer guy, he didn't get here in January and go through spring. So he's had to learn it quick. And um, I'm really, really proud of how he's been and, and bought into what we're trying to do. And he's extremely competitive. Um, he thinks he needs the ball on every single play. I respect that. Those are guys that feel like they can beat any DB, any coverage all the time. So um, I expect him to have a really good year. Receivers doing so well. Does Malik is he even getting any reps of receiver now? And, and just how would you assess his camp? He looks like his arm's stronger, more accurate. How, how would you say he's done overall? Yeah, Malik's had a good camp. He is playing. Um, he's still, you know, going out there and playing some receiver for us. Um, you know, it helps that some of those guys that weren't here in the spring or didn't perform at high levels in the spring are, are doing that now. So it takes a little bit of pressure off of that. Uh, but he's he's still. You know, he's, he's a guy that can play multiple positions. He's, he's doing a really good job at quarterback. Like talk about his arm strength and accuracy, uh, we've been pleased with. So um, he's got a role, and um, we're really excited to have him on the team. So I, I expect some big things from him. You know, there's been a lot of discussion about Landers and Hazelwood, Keytron Jackson to an extent. How's Warren Thompson coming along in camp? What are you seeing from him? Uh, to me, Warren's probably had the most consistent camp um, of any receiver. Um, he's done a really good job. You know, Warren – from right now, last year to where he is right now is is different guy. Um, and not anything from a character standpoint or how he's acting, just his knowledge. And now he's, you know, he sees things and he's able to do some things on the field instead of just reacting because he, he really doesn't know what's going on. Uh, he's seeing things, he's talking about it. If he misses, you know, a route or, or misses a play that he should have had, then he's he's beating himself up about it. And last year, he may not even know it. So it's, it's just completely different where he's at. And he's catching the football, and he's, you know, 6'3 and can run. Hey, Coach, I seen you playing some defense on the receivers today. Does that help you do anything for the for the QBs, or you just want to challenge the receivers out there? <laughs> it's not a challenge to them, I can assure you. Uh, it's a challenge for me. I'll probably need the ice tub after this. But, no, just different routes we're doing and routes on there, trying to give those guys a look. So they, they got different options, just trying to give them a look. Isaiah Tinio is another guy that got here over the summer. How is he progressing and what kind of role do you envision him having this year? Yeah, he's still developing right now. Uh, really excited about him. Going to have a tremendous future. You know, the thing I like about him, and he is uh, as low maintenance as, as any guy could be. You know, and he's a guy who had, you know, this day and age that could go different places for different reasons. And, um, you know, he's been extremely low maintenance, love his work ethic. Um, he's a tough kid, doesn't – doesn't say anything, doesn't complain about anything, just goes out there and goes to work. Um, obviously, he can run, and he's pretty slippery. And um, But I think the biggest thing I've been impressed with is just his toughness. He's, he's been a tough kid, makes tough catches, contested catches, and um, he's going to have a bright future. With four of your starters back on the offensive line, it seems like Luke Jones is pretty good there, at, solid there at left tackle. How 
better do you think this offensive line could be this year compared to last year? I don't want to compare it. Every everything's different, you know. Uh, schedule's different. You know, we got different personnel outside. Um, so I, I don't want to compare. They can they can be as good as as Ricky Strongberg and those guys want to be. You know, they're a really tight knit group. Coach Kennedy does a tremendous job with the offensive line. Um, they got a great culture in that room. Um, and Luke has done a he's done a great job. We needed him to step up and be a really good player for us. Um, he's doing that in camp. Is it going to translate to the year? We sure hope so. Uh, but he's been really solid, and he's blocking some good ends here in camp. So we're excited about those guys up front and how they play uh, together, all five of them. You know, is there a superstar in the group? You know, you never know, but they play well together, and that's that's what matters. Just with that freshman group, you mentioned Satag Satagna. Um, Bakke and McAdoo look pretty dang good, too. Uh, yes. What are your thoughts on, on that? McAdoo had a really nice catch today, too. Yeah, he had a great catch. Um, just consistency, you know, really consistent. McAdoo, um, man, he's just been – he's been awesome to see how his development has been. He's probably gained 20 pounds since he got on campus. Um, he's strong. He's willing. He's tough as nails. Him and Bakke are really, really tough. Really that whole freshman class with Satania, those are really tough players, which you got to be. And um, those guys can run and catch the ball, and they got Link, Bakke, and, and McAdoo. So – uh, really excited about about where they're at and Coach Guy and his development with them. Thought up tomorrow. Thought up scrimmage. Say it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so technically, that's the last day of fall camp. The school starting on Monday. Uh, I assume Monday you'll break off with some scout teams. And I don't know. Are you jumping right into Cincinnati on Monday? Or are you going to wait till midweek? Or what's the thought there? That's a head coach question. We're going. We're going to see what what the schedule is, and we'll execute it whatever he gives us. So the kids will start class and and get their books and and get them going. So um, we'll see what our plan is. We're going to staff today, staff tomorrow, and, and figure out what's the best thing, how we feel like we need to move forward. Yeah, we haven't asked any running back questions. Uh, Not we straight receivers. <laughs> So, so Rocket, it's, we see pass pro from him, vision. Uh, can you talk about him and then maybe how you feel about the entire depth? Yep. Um, Rocket is, is going to be a tremendous ambassador uh, for this university. Um, the way that he conducts himself on a daily basis, um, there may not be a better pro in the building. Just everything he does. Um, you know, he can come babysit my kids anytime he wants. I mean, he is, he is a first-class person uh you know role model player just everything about him and that's why he's able to to be the player that he is every everything he does is about taking care of his body he's in there all the time um you know just maintaining himself so he's really smart coach smith's done a great job with him with the running back you know he really didn't play much of that in high school and he you saw flashes last year of him being really good um he catches the ball well he's he's extremely tough he finishes runs He's got some some really good elusiveness stuff to him, um, and he's really smart. So he's a guy that, you know, you talk about raise your hand if you trust Rocket. Every single guy in the building is going to raise their hand. Um, so I love where he's at, and he's really developed some of the other guys in that room, especially, you know, with Dominique right now, not you know, full speed. So uh, we feel good about our depth in the room. AJ and Rashad Dabinian have done a really nice job. Javion Hunt's been – a steady, steady player for us. And I think James Joyner is going to have a chance. He's a big guy that can run, and he's really tough. And the efficiency of the quarterbacks a minute ago, what is it about Fortin that's behind KJ? Um, just with the completion percentage? Yeah, yeah. He's just – he's really accurate. And, um, you know, he's, he's a smart kid. I mean, he knows exactly um, what's happening on defense, where the ball needs to go, and he does it in a fast – fast play so he gets the ball out of his hands so you know a lot of times pressures can get to you and, and they don't usually get to him because he knows exactly where the ball should go um and he's he's accurate when he's doing it so it's been it's been great to be able to watch him work and develop in this offense hey coach with the availability of the transfer portal how important is it for you to get the quarterback position right out of the high school ranks and then what are you looking for when you're recruiting those guys um with the transfer portal you know, in general, it's just makes makes it always difficult with your roster, what whatever position that may be. Um, I feel like it's it's really it's it's probably for everybody. It's really important to get a high school guy that you like that wins that fits your team and your and your culture and, and what you want to go with your program. Um, that being said, you know, 
this day and age, if quarterbacks are sitting, if you got four guys on the roster all on scholarship and one's not playing, what's he going to do? It's going to go on the transfer portal. So there's going to be guys that are available if at some point you had a guy leave or, or something happens with them off the field. Um, there's always going to be guys available in the portal. Um, at this point in our program, where we are, we would like to be able to stay with high school guys, um, you know, to come in here and develop. Um, but things are always changing. So you got to, you got to be, you got to be aware of it and you got to be able to change as a coach as well. Um, but we look for guys that are winners. You know, I like, we like a mobile player. You know, I, I think especially in the SEC uh, and where we're at with this program right now, we've got to play some 11 on 11 football at some point. And you got to have a guy that can, you know, create plays on his own. Um, so, you know, I call something bad. He makes it look good. You know, I like guys like that. So uh, we got we got some guys in the room that can they can make plays with their feet. Um, and you got to have a leader, um, a guy that everybody in the locker room, when he talks, they listen to him. And he's got to take care of himself on and off the field at all times. So got to have that in that room. And, um, you know, we feel good about the guys we got and the ones that we're recruiting. Yeah, Coach, um, I was curious. Last year you guys kind of got off to a slow start. You picked it up, obviously, but it was 10-7 at halftime of the first game, 13 penalties, not all on the offense, but um, a lot on defense. Uh, opening kickoff was fumbled. Do you guys talk to them about that, about starting starting strong, or is it too early to do all that? That is – that's something we're going to be talking about. Uh, you know, as coach staffs, we have talked about it. Um, and we've – you know, Coach Pittman's got his own way of doing things, and he throws little tidbits out every once in a while about starting fast. And we've – actually, this camp, we've had more, you know, you guys that have come to practice, more fastball starts where we start the practice where we're just ripping and um, putting a lot of emphasis on that, you know, trying to start fast. Last year – like I said, we didn't we didn't know what we had, you know, from really a quarterback position. And, um, you know, you go through <clears throat> all these practices and you get in there with a lot of people in the stands. It's just different, you know, and it's just it's just different. So to get out there and try to execute early without penalties and especially playing a tempo offense where we're not huddling everybody is always real calm about what's going on. Um, you know, so it, it can be challenging at times, but Boy, it helps having a guy who's done it and played the position, done it at a high level. So having KJ back really helps. Back to recruiting. Uh, I guess that was your first time out uh, in the spring evaluation period since you've been yep. at Arkansas with COVID and all that stuff. Um, or do you stick mainly to Texas and then spot recruit quarterbacks nationally, or do you have different regions? And what was it like for you getting out in the van, I guess? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, if they had the van, I got the van. But if not, then I'd, I'd get something else. Um, uh, we have all a place in Arkansas that we go a region, so able to hit those schools early on. Um, it's, it's great to be able to get out in Arkansas. You know, we hadn't been able to do that much, so being able to get out here and go to different high schools and talk with coaches, that was great. And then I've got I've got an area in Houston and in Dallas, and then um, spot recruiting and quarterbacks has been kind of the main thing and high priority offensive guys has has been what I did in the spring. But it was great. You know, it was great to be able to get out. Um, you know, there's there's times there when it's a grind, you know, when you're recruiting uh, during the week and come back, you got official visits. It's, you know, you're not seeing your family as much as you'd want to. So FaceTime helps. But it was good being able to get out there and see people. Are you are you totally cool with KJ leading the team in rushing? Uh, would you like me to see his numbers come down just a little bit? Where do you stand on his usage as a runner? I'm totally cool winning football games. And I, I'm not. I'm not a stats guy. I mean, stats are good because people lie and numbers don't. But I like winning. And however we got to win, I don't care. Um, you know, if the defense scores, you know, two safeties and we win four nothing, we won. It's all about winning football games. Now, it's not going to be happy and we're not going to be excited about it, but it's all about winning games. So I don't care how we do it. How do you feel about the potential to have better offensive <clears throat> efficiency numbers, better, better total offense numbers this season? Uh, hit me one more time with that. Do you feel like you guys are prepared to have a little higher total offense numbers and pass efficiency this season? Can That's kind of the same question. I mean, it's just, I don't, it doesn't, that kind of stuff doesn't matter. You know, we need to go out and perform at a high level, give our chance, you know, a win to win the game by not turning the football over. I, do I think we have players and, you know, coaches and schemes to be able to play at a high level? Yes, sir. Absolutely. But, um, 
you know, it's at the end of the day, none of that stuff matters. And, and it looks good and it's good for recruiting to be able to have high numbers because, you know, you can give a little, you know, validity to the guys that you're talking to. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if you're if you're leading America and rushing and you're five and seven, you know, it's not great. You need to win football games. And um, that's that's really all we're concerned about as a coaching staff. So those rushing numbers leading the power five and rushing, those were good for recruiting then. Yeah, and it helped us win games too, you know. So that's kind of a byproduct, yes, sir. We heard that Trey Knox had a couple catches in last Saturday's scrimmage. KJ said he's got a good connection with him. I'm curious what you're seeing from Trey and that connection he has with KJ. Yeah, I'm so proud of Trey. You know, he um, you know, came here as a receiver with another staff. We came in, played receiver. I was actually talking to Trey. I looked at um, so we scrimmaged last Saturday and I went back and just looked at it real quick to see kind of what we were doing on offense at that time because we're we were different. And Trey Knox was starting outside receiver on the right. And uh, I went up to him and told him about it. He's like, what? And it's just crazy how that is. One year ago, he's our starting outside receiver. So um, I'm so proud of, of him, you know, buying into to our vision, his vision for what he can be for our football program and him for the future. And he's done a tremendous job with strength and conditioning program with his weight to get to where he is right now. And he is extremely reliable. He's, uh, he's one of the brightest kids that we have on our football team. Um, you know, if, if something, if we signal something wrong or call it wrong, he'll be quick to, to know that it is wrong and he'll let us know. He's a sharp kid. Um, I, I really, really hope he can stay healthy and, and have a great year because, yeah, him and KJ got a great, great connection. And then also, it seems like the team is kind of bought into this run off the field, basically run wherever you're going during practice. Coach Loggins is like really on that with the tight ends. How do you see that that helps the team, you know, just getting quickly to everywhere they're going in practice? Can that translate to during games, you know, maybe even starting fast? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's just one of our team rules. You know, Coach Pittman, and we all know it as coaches, our players know it. That is our conditioning. You know, you go to a lot of places and they're going to run guys after practice. You know, we don't want to do that. We want them to condition during practice. And it's all about the mindset of how you take the field, getting on the field. Um, you know, body language shows everything. You you mope out on the field or jog out on the field with your head down. It just doesn't look good. It's not intimidating to the defense. Um, so we want to get out on the field and and have some some presence when we get out there. And then you know, things don't happen the way we want them to happen. We want our we want our guys getting off the field. So we don't want them walking off the field. We want them running off the field. And practice right now. That we're training them to do that, and that's for conditioning. Yeah, KJ, I think he had like twenty one TDs to four picks and. I don't remember him having very many fumbles as much as he handles the ball, you know, as much as he runs, what's the key to his ball protection and how, you know, how big a plus is that? He just doesn't make plays. He, he doesn't lose the ball either. Yeah. You know, that that's correlated to the center, Ricky Strongberg as well. And the running backs, the guys that are, that are meshing with the football. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that, that touch the ball, but the center and the quarterback are touching it every snap. Like you talked about, um, our number one goal every single game is no turnovers. We talk about it, you know, every time we take the field for uh, any possession during a game. Um, and then that's the number one goal of our offense is protecting the football. So we did a really nice job of that last year. We had nine total going in the bowl game, had two in the bowl game. Uh, if we can continue to protect the ball at a high level, our defense is going to get turnovers. Um, you know, we'll have a chance to win games. And that's that's where you want to be. I think you came in here last year at this time. And somebody asked you about KJ's c completion percentage. I think you said something like 65%. Or you thought that was realistic. I remember a lot of us might have thought, hey, that's asking a lot for a first time starter, but he did even better than that. What, and like you say, variables with different receivers and whatever opponents, but what are you expecting from him? Can he, you know, do, raise his completion percentage even higher, do you think? Yeah. I mean, he, he should be at that. Um, he can play. Um, obviously at that level, we've seen it and, um, he should play at that, that level. Uh, we got really good receivers. We feel like, and, you know, good old line, good running backs, good tight end. So, you know, the schedule is what it is, but we got a good football team as well. So we expect him to play at a high level and he does too. We've heard a lot of good things about Cade Fortin. Uh, how, how much is he pushing Hornsby for that backup job? Was there a battle there for that number two spot? Yeah, he's done He's done a really good job. You know, both those guys, I feel like we definitely trust on the field. Um, and, and they're both a little different. You know, Kate is, 
you know, okay, can move around a little bit, but he's he's a guy that can get back there and deal the ball. And then obviously with Malik and his speed and what he does to the defense with, you know, plus one game and, and still being able to throw the football down the field, we feel really good about both those guys if, if they're called upon. Last year, y'all were able to bring in Cade Renfro as a, a non-scholarship guy <clears throat> from Ole Miss. You know, Cade started out in North Carolina, Power 5 guys as a non-scholarship guy. What's it say to be able to be, be able to bring someone in of that caliber as a walk-on? It's huge, you know. You know, I don't know what it what it says. I know how it feels. It feels good having them in the quarterback room. You know, those guys are are power five scholarship quarterbacks, and and they're in our room, and you know they're paying for their school. Um, I think it shows that this program is on the rise. I think that shows that these kids trust what we have going on here. Um, and then you know we talked about the transfer portal earlier. You know, guys can get in there and and sit in there for a while and not have a home and, and maybe not get exactly what they want. And um, I think that's another good use, you know, for the portal guys that sit in there for a long time. And if they're given hope, whether that's, you know, monetarily or not with, with the scholarship, then um, you can get some guys on your campus. And, you know, once you get a guy over here to Fayetteville and, and show them the place and let them feel our, our culture, then they may want to be a part of it. Thanks, guys. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you all.